Patch 3.17.2 for the Star Citizen Alpha Persistent Universe brought with it not only a clutch of exciting new locations and additions, but was also the herald of a wallet and inventory wipe. And while the reputation benefits persisted, allowing many long-time players to easily and quickly reamass their wealth in a stockpile of ships, 2022 saw a rather considerable influx of newer as well as long absent players wow. joining or rejoining the verse. And so it stands to reason that while a tier 5 security defense mission or a max bounty max crusader security rank VHRT chain might be the steadiest source of income for some, it might not be everybody's cup of tea or even accessible from the get go. But worry not citizens, I've got you covered. My name's Bit of Oz and today I'll be showing you how to make easy money with the combat assist beacons and I'll be doing it in an Aurora MR. Let's dive in. The combat assist beacons are not a new feature per se, but they have up until 3.17.2 been rather lackluster and often broken. But with a fair bit of testing in the PTU, they've been brought up to a reasonable standard that while they lack in complex variety, they do mostly work and the pay is nothing to turn your nose up at. Found in the general contracts tab in your Moby Glass under beacons, these one-off assistance missions will have you jumping to an emergency beacon placed by an NPC in distress. If you haven't done any of these yet, you'll have access to the lowest level of these distress calls, generally offering between 1 and 2,000 credits. The completion of these low level missions will net you not only the designated pay, but will also go towards your contractor rating, the metric by which these assistance missions are to be graded and sorted, unlike the majority of other mission types that fall under the umbrella of the faction ranking system. Successfully completing these missions and bolstering that contractor rating will present you with the beacons of a higher payout and higher difficulty, whether that be in the particular enemy ship you are tasked with destroying, or the number of additional vessels included in that kill list. So here we are in the Persistent Universe, 3.17.2 has gone live and I'm running this on my alt account because it has the starter ship, the Aurora MR. I've chosen New Babbage and Microtech as my starter location because I want this ship to come out of the gate swinging. I'm going to take the Metro Loop to the Commons and we're going to center mass to buy another set of Bulldog Laser Repeaters and some Very Puck Gimbals. They may only be size 1s, but having 4 of these guys throwing red down range is going to melt shields, especially on the smaller guys we'll be encountering in the early stages of these beacons. During the PTU phase of 3.17.2, these missions would only populate in the Microtech and Crusader regions, or at least for me, and while the beacons themselves could still be received and accepted anywhere in Stanton, Doing so to then travel 40 million kilometers usually resulted in the ship requesting assistance being destroyed. We're going to head on over to the NBIS. We're going to exit the atmosphere and land at Port Tresler. The early beacons aren't overly difficult, but it's Star Citizen. Anything can happen. So let's set our regen point here for a faster return to the fight. Once we've done that, we're going to sit in our ship and monitor the beacons. Now, if you're watching this relatively soon after the patches drop, don't be surprised if the beacons don't come hot and fast. There are going to be a lot of citizens doing them, I'd wager, and the increased server cap isn't going to help that at all. And as always, if you aren't in the habit of doing this yet, go to the Mercenary tab of General and accept the Call to Arms mission. This cherry on the cake payment will add up in the early days post-wipe, believe me. If you're starting the beacons for the first time, the initial offerings are going to be rather meagre, anywhere between 1 and 2,000 credits, but that's alright. We're going to be hopefully knocking them out so frequently that they will quickly be adding up. When accepting a beacon, be sure to take note of the distance to the target. If it's 50 million kilometers away, maybe not that one. Something in the 100k kilometer range is going to be in our system. Once you've accepted one, double check it is in your accepted missions. I've noticed that if a few citizens are claiming these at the same time, someone else might actually snap it up before you. Once you've confirmed that it's actually yours, go to your skyline maps and lock in the destination for faster travel. This is a big part of why I prefer these to the dedicated bounty missions. Bounties won't always give you a QT point within the spitting distance of the objective, whereas the beacons will. The next step is simple enough. Once you arrive at the beacon, target and eliminate the hostile ship before it can destroy the friendly NPC that has sent out the distress call. Be wary when targeting however. In the PTU I accidentally targeted the friendly NPC and this caused them to become hostile. 
Once you've eliminated the threat, you receive your payout and be prompted to rate the mission giver with a good or bad rating. Speaking of ratings, if you're enjoying this video or found it useful at all, please hit that like button. I don't know if the ratings help in the Beacon mission, but I know your like puts a smile on my face. If you aren't subscribed already and enjoy my content, consider doing so now. I also stream on Twitch, so swing on by and say howdy. I'll put a link to that in the description below. As you increase your contractor rank through successful completion of the beacons, you'll see an increase of the reward offered up to 40k within that low threat bracket. These higher paying missions will have up to three targets with higher tiered ships as the enemies such as the Cutlass, Hornet and Eclipse. Once you press into the moderate threat territory, this is where things start to get interesting. Not only will you be taking on a higher tier of enemy, but you'll be racing against the many other citizens scrambling to make that higher bracket of pay. And here's an important thing to note if you are also pushing into that rat race. At the time of making this video, you could only ever hold one of these beacons at a time, meaning if you are in the middle of one such mission, taking another one will abandon the original, so be wary of habitually hitting that bracket key. I'm not a particularly talented combat pilot, and though I am a money hungry citizen, I've found the higher tiered low threat beacons to be my favourite, especially in my Aurora with its weapon limitations. While it's true, an 80k reward and higher is tempting, the time spent whittling away at higher tiered shields could be better spent cutting through multiple beacons for a better time versus reward spread. The high threat bracket is not for the faint of heart. Offering a payout of anywhere from 100,000 credits upwards, these missions will pit you against the likes of the Constellation or the Hammerhead. My little Aurora simply wasn't up to the task, especially with myself at the sticks, and the likes of these beacons are better suited to group play. While I was able to survive and evade the larger enemies doing my meager damage, the friendly NPCs were ultimately destroyed and the mission failed. The unfortunate downside with group play, however, is that the beacon assist missions themselves cannot be shared, so be sure to take note of how many credits you have tallied when working with friends to divvy up afterwards. Now obviously these beacons could be accomplished faster and easier with a more combat oriented ship, from the Arrow to the Sentinel and beyond, but I wanted to point out that even with the limitations of a starter vehicle, these beacons can be easily utilised to make easy money within a short space of time. If you've learned something new or inspired to try out the beacons yourself, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already and want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. And a reminder that I do also stream on Twitch, the link is in the description below. And as always citizens, I'll see you all in the verse next time.